Welcome back, still watching Anal Cruz. No one would ever believe that the young man who left Egypt with 10 English pounds starting his career as a newspaper seller and a dishwasher would become after years a senior advisor for the International Association for University Presidents. Her Majesty Queen Margaret II of Denmark signed an official royal decree to bestow on Anal Gleli, one of the highest titles in Denmark, Knight of Danabrog. This honor is considered by the country as an appreciation for his role and effort in exerting to serve and enhance locally and internationally the Royal Danish uh, Kingdom prestige and significance. Galali has been registered in several worldwide encyclopedias and publications. Galali was a member of several delegations headed by Her Majesty the Queen of Denmark, His Royal Highness the Prince Consort and Prime Minister of Denmark representing the, uh, the international hotel that he founded and the tourism sector. We're joined with Anel Gareli, the founder and president of the International Hotel Group, Denmark Ambassador of Historical Relations for Middle East, and the Chairman of Advisory Council, the International Association of University Presidents. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anel. Thank you. Uh, we'll start, uh, first of all, you have a wide experience in the world of business. And um, how are you uh, seeing now the uh, investment environment I uh, honestly, we need a new vision and a new uh, mission for our uh, future. Uh, Egypt now in transferring, uh, processing for a new future. Egypt have been uh, maybe I can see uh, used or misused during not decades, during hundreds of years. Uh, if you look, if you look uh, how other countries have gained and developed uh, in the past uh, few decades, we are behind. Therefore, it's, uh, we need a new environment, we need a new decision makers and not conversations to uh, get Egypt in the right track and get Egypt as it is deserved as a country who have been the center of all its different civilizations and religions. Yes. So uh, you started by saying a new vision, a new mission. Uh, and that's an important you know, insight uh, for a new start for Egypt with the uh, sort of deteriorating investment climate at the state. So in your opinion, uh, what would be the ultimate way in order to progress further with enhancing the in investment climate. And definitely security could be one of the aspects, uh, but there are a lot more to add from you, more about your experience to add to this important topic. Um, the geographical location of Egypt is one of the most important in the world. If you look, where is Egypt today? And where is Chile today? Where is other countries like China? Is we are in the center of the world, and uh, what we missing today is infrastructure. <coughs> we missing we miss roads, we miss uh, power plant, we miss uh, uh, different international uh, infrastructure, under uh, uh, ground infrastructures. We need uh, um, so many things for infrastructure. Uh, international uh, ports, uh, airports, to serve what we got in this uh, very important uh, geographical location. Uh, I feel that Egypt it is a, can be a center for free zones in different parts. Look, Taba, how many countries just few minutes from you, not few hours, from few minutes. Look in uh, Al Salum, how, how far Al Salum in north uh, west Egypt, how far it, this city uh, distance, how far it is to Europe and to other North uh, African countries. Uh, look in uh, Halaib, how far it is to all the Arab world, which we have a, a lot of. Uh, power of economic power, oil power, different uh, uh, different sources. So Egypt location is, is not used yet 
to develop the Egyptian standard of life. It has been developed so many other countries, other countries surrounding us and other uh, maybe European countries and different parts of the world. So I feel to use this location in the right way, to make the right highway, to ask different countries, don't give Egypt money. We don't need money. Come and build for us updated roads from Aswan to Alexandria, from Saloum to Taba, from uh, different places which roads can be safe for transportation of human beings, even Egyptian or foreigner, and also for transportation of our uh, gods and material. And uh, there's also been a, a bad image lately uh, about the businessmen in, in Egypt because of many of them being linked to corruption. Uh, how maybe can we change this image, do you think? I'll tell you, uh, if we look for, um, I don't want focusing in corruption so much because the revolution, 25 January revolution, was one of the most important issue was the corruption. Uh, it's one of the main reasons for actually having main a revolution. Main reason, right. Exactly. The main reason. Yes. Um, and therefore, the, the corruption, I don't want focusing in this issue because the corruption... But there's been a sort of a link that most of the corruption was linked basically to the businessmen. Do you think, uh, is this, how far is true is this or the image that maybe we can change or how can we change it or it doesn't even exist, this image in your opinion? I think we are, uh, or Egypt now, in the way to change this. You can look, the new government don't have one businessman exactly. in the government. And I don't never, uh, never understand that is the... Uh, uh, the businessman will be politician in the same time the representing uh, in the parliament uh, themselves representing in the in the mayor's uh, position representing minister position to make decision political decision while they are at the same time working for their own business this is not acceptable in many parts of the world but we can see it not on only in Egypt but we can see it in so Everywhere. many different countries especially Middle Eastern countries. And this one of the lake of our development, world development, to match the right uh, uh, living standard for the people, because this mix between business and political uh, decision. So you work your way up uh, from the very bottom of the, uh, at the hospitality industry to become, to become the head and the founder of one of the most important international hotel groups. Um, if you can tell us a little bit about how did this begin, because you started your uh, answers at the beginning of this interview with a vision. So, and definitely you had also a vision in terms of establishing this largest uh, foundation. Uh, if you can share with us more about you know, this long journey. Oh, it's a long story, but uh, I have uh, left Egypt while I was... I have what did you have in mind when you left Egypt? Back then I'm just uh, the situation in Egypt at that time was I'm um, failure in my school. I don't even have high school exam and I cannot get it. I think everyone ha have a high school exam for me is a genius until yeah. today. How he read all those books, I don't understand that. And uh, I was a black sheep in my, in my family between my friends. So I felt myself I am a foreigner between my own country and between my own friends. So I have to leave to just to to be away from the eyes accusing me that I'm a failure. And uh, I left the country and uh, my first stop uh, was uh, in Vienna, which uh, your dad was ambassador there, I know, and uh, Mr. Um, Dr. Mustafa Zeki. And um, I slept in the streets and uh, it was a story by this way, that my the own goal I need was to get a bed and the meal a day. This is really, I don't have any ambition in my life. Any, until today. I'm not running after ambition. And uh, if we talk about uh, what I achieved, I never had the dream to achieve one of percent of what I achieved in, the, in my life. I was, I only fight it to achieve experience and respect. And I think I've done it uh, through many decades. And I have achieved so much that I thank God for it. Um, Mr. Anan, uh, moving on maybe to the tourism industry, um, 
now in the, in the difficult um, economic times in Egypt, how do you think can we face the current challenges in the tourism sector? I would like to tell you the economic, industri the economic situation is not only in Egypt. The economic situation has hurt it approx most of the world. Oh. European banks bankrupt. We have economic, no one body can say to you we don't have economic situation. Every company has economic dif difficult economic situation today. So the economic situation in Egypt came in the same time while whole, so many places in the world is suffering. And this made it more worse for Egypt today. But um, I think that we have to make rules, we have to make decisions, we have to make plans, or Egypt has to make plans, not five years and ten years plans, but plans for one week and one month, so the people can feel if something happens, and also the international community and the world and countries can understand. Maybe and you can also give us a glimpse of maybe ideas to uh, make the hotel industry stronger in Egypt. Uh, we have to get safety roads, we have to get safety countries, so no uh, other countries can accuse us that we don't have safety. And uh, we have the people, we are always have to develop our way of thinking, not maybe only for the tourism, but also for so many other things. The brain of the Egyptian, in my eye, have, uh, have been confiscated through decades and through hundreds of years. And this, our way of thinking has to develop to match the new time and the new uh, generations and the new things happening around, surrounding us in the world. And we have been confiscated. We have been, uh, I think, uh, uh, when I grew up and while I was little, my dad, even he was officer, he told me, hello, have a condition what you're saying. You must not think and you must not speak free inside this house. So, uh, therefore, we are suffering today from uh, development of our way of living because we have been confiscated and suddenly everybody has been free. Yes. In, in your opinion, what would be a dramatic change or what would be a very impactful in the tourism industry if we're looking at hotels in specific? Now, we have this, you know, a sort of a huge amount of resorts in Egypt, beautiful ones. Uh, one of the best services, one of the best locations. And the weather. And the weather. Yes. So in your opinion, amazing. what could have this you know, dramatic impact and change over this industry? Uh, we need to have much more control in some tourist sites. Uh, that is, the tourists can be treated nice and not misused. Yes. Uh, and uh, I can see what development have been happened in infrastructure. It's wa wonderful. But in the way of the tourists have been uh, been treated, it's totally different, uh, different and difficult than before. Because uh, it, uh, after, especially after the revolution, we we have expect that we will develop uh, our tourist sites and the tourist uh, and uh, our tradition can be better. It became worse because it uh, became something. It's called. Uh, I don't know what's in English, so sorry, my English is not too good. I learned it in the street, not in the school, no, it, yes. like you, but it was Ashwaeya. I don't know what's Ashwaeya in English. And, uh, Haphazard. Oh, yes. It became to be a part of our life, and this way have been uh, affected also the tourists that is the, can may avoid to come to Egypt because you want to be treated like the Egyptian original tradition like we have learned it while in many decades. Yes, um, uh, my final question to you is about your dreams for Egypt. How are you seeing the upcoming period? Uh, I know you have both aspects, the business and also the political engagement. Uh, so I'd like to get your insight about what are you seeing for the future for Egypt? Uh, sorry, I will never be political engagement in my, engagement in my life. This yes. is uh, totally uh, closed. Away, yes. yes. Uh, but uh, my vision, Egypt can never be worse than it was before. Never. Egypt has a huge opportunity today to be achieved much more than South Korea have achieved, much more than Malaysia have achieved, much more than Turkey have achieved, much more than many other countries 
have developed themselves Brazil. They made aeroplanes today. Egypt, by the location we have and the people they have and the unemployment we have, it can achieve much more than other countries if they have the right direction and use of uh, slogan of development for the people, for the cities, and for the country. Um, Mr. Anan Gerali, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, Mr. Anan, the founder and president of the International Hotel Group, a Denmark ambassador of historical relations to the Middle East, and chairman of the Advisory Council, International Association of University Presidents. Thank you very much. And yep. uh, we'll have a short break, and we'll be right back. Thank you.